Hello and welcome to our lecture on operating and financial leverage. So today we are going to look at what is leverage, break even analysis, operating leverage, financial leverage in different points, and combined and our total leverage. So here are the learning objectives so you can go through them. So we'll start by looking at leverage in a business. The leverage is using fixed costs to magnify the potential return of a firm. And there are two types of fixed costs. So, there, uh, so let, let, let's talk a little about fixed costs. The fixed cost is that cost that does not change with the level of production or sales, right? Within the, sh the short run, that cost remains the same. So there are two types of fixed costs. There's fixed operating costs, example, rent or amortization. And then there's fixed financial costs, example, interest costs uh, on debt. So there are two types of leverage. Is operating leverage the degree to which capital assets and its associated fixed costs are utilized in a business and then there is financial leverage where the amount of debt used in the capital structure of the business and remember whenever we talk about debt we are always talking about the debt equity mix um, as far as the capital structure of the business is concerned so from a balance sheet perspective we have on the left hand side you can see that operating leverage are more focused there because of capital assets where we we talk about the mix of uh, the amount of capital assets being used in the business and on the right hand side financial leverage which is the focus is really on debt and interest charges so we have loans or bond charge or bonds or our lease payments so previously, when we discussed the income statement, we use what's the normal uh, income statement, which is usually uh, called um, the full cost uh, method, or uh, sometimes called total cost. So the total cost is where we take sales minus cost of goods sold, and then we come to what is known as gross profit. From gross profit, we will take our operating expenses uh, and then we will then come to earnings before interest and taxes are operating income. In this income statement, however, we are going to use what's called a marginal cost approach. And in the marginal cost approach, what we are going to do is to split out the costs into fixed and variable costs. So, we start out again with sales. From sales, there will we will take variable cost. The variable cost amount will be taken from sales, and then we arrived at what at what is known as contribution margin. From contribution margin, we will take fixed cost. So from contribution margin, we'll take fixed costs and we arrive at operating costs or earnings before interest and taxes. Now after this point, we our income statement will resemble the previous one that we have studied. So you will have um, interest that comes, uh, that we have earnings before interest and taxes, less interest, and then we have earnings before taxes then we take away taxes and we come to earnings after taxes then shares we have um, 8,000 shares and so we can find earnings per share and in this case it represents $150. Now the focus here you will see that operating leverage is a focus of the upper part of this income statement from sales to the operating income and then the lower half of it from operating income to financial leverage is to uh, earnings per share is uh, where the focus is for 
financial leverage. So um, this income statement here, as you can see, we have fixed costs of $60,000 and this company has earnings of 12000 based on, on um, sales of 160000 So let's look at break-even analysis. So a firm's operating costs may be classified, first of all, into fixed, variable, and semi-variable costs. So fixed costs are those costs that remain uh, the same in the short run. And example of those are rent, amortization, executive salaries, or property taxes. Variable costs, on the other hand, are those costs that change as production uh, or sales changes. And those, for example, would be a raw material, factory labor, sales commission. There's also a, sec a third um, category known as semi-variable, and those costs may change, but not directly related to production or sales. An example of those are like utilities, uh, repairs, and maintenance. Now, for our purpose, we will have fixed costs and variable costs. Our semi-variable costs will be grouped together with variable costs. So we will be dealing with fixed costs and <coughs> variable costs. So break-even analysis is a technique used to study the effect of sales volume on cost and profit. So the, 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 the important thing here that we are looking for would be our break-even point. Break even is where there's no profit and there's no loss because a total cost is equal to total revenue. That is where you find um, break even. How do we calculate break even? Break even is equal to fixed cost over contribution margin, or it could be written as fixed cost over price minus variable cost which is also equal to fixed cost over contribution margin. And if you remember our income statement, you will remember where we get our contribution margin. So you can see contribution margin here in our income statement. So let's look at a graphical representation of our income statement that we have been studying. So you can see break even here is at 50,000 units, and you can see it's at $100,000 in sales. So at $60,000, we have that fixed cost line, which is a horizontal cost line because fixed costs remain the same irrespective of production or sales level. So what does that mean? It means that our total cost line, which is this red thing, uh, line that goes up here, will start not at zero, but at 60,000. Because cost doesn't, our cost will not start at zero. Uh, whether the company produces or not, the cost will have cost of 60,000. So at zero production level, Total cost will be sixty thousand. The total cost starts at sixty thousand and then goes all the way up. Uh, compared with total revenue, which will start at zero. The company doesn't sell anything. There is no revenue, so revenue will be zero. And you can see that line going up as well. And where both the total revenue line and the total cost line meet is our break-even point and break-even can be represented in dollars as in this case it would be a hundred thousand dollars or it can be represented in units which in this case it would have been fifty thousand units so you can notice here as well uh, the, uh, the green lightly green shaded area uh, uh, it's profit area, which is above the break-even point, and below that break-even point, that pink, lightly pink-shaded area would represent our loss. So here's a table of what we were just looking at. So you can see 
that at zero units being sold, total variable cost would be zero, fixed cost would be 60,000, and total cost would be $60,000. So total revenue, zero, operating income or loss would be $60,000. So 20,000 units sold, the company would have $16,000 in variable cost, $160,000 in fixed cost, $76,000 in total cost, and $40,000 in total revenue. So therefore, operating loss would now be $36,000 at the break-even point. At break-even, break-even, we said would have been 50,000 units. So at break-even, we have total variable cost of 40,000, fixed cost of 50,000, and that gives total fixed cost, total cost of 100,000, total revenue of 100,000, and so there's no profit or loss. Now, at 60,000 units, company would have $48,000 in variable cost, $60,000 in fixed cost, $108,000 total cost, and total revenue of one twenty. so profit would have been 12000 At 100,000 units, if the company was able to sell 100,000 units, then Total variable cost of 80,000, fixed cost of 60,000, total cost of 140,000, total revenue of 200,000, and profit of $60,000. Now, let's take a look at a more conservative firm. So, a firm that has less exposure to fixed costs, the risk associated with fixed costs, so its use of leverage is lower than our previous firm that we look at. So the previous graph that we look at, you notice that the area at the top here of profit was much wider and as well as the area of loss. So that firm was using more leverage in its business. In this case, this is the more conservative firm that's using less leverage. So because it's using less leverage, its fixed costs will be lower and therefore its break-even point will be lower. So in this case, break the fixed cost. It has fixed cost of twelve thousand. So it's the fixed cost line is drawn here at the twelve thousand dollar mark in revenue. So fixed cost is twelve thousand, and so break even would be less at sixty thousand dollars or thirty thousand units. Notice as well that the shaded area of profit and losses are less in this case. So it tells us that company that uses a less yet less leverage would be uh, become more conservative, which means it's more ex less exposure to risk in 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 in, in time of difficulty, but also it would be less profitable in good time. So. Some company may choose to adopt this approach because it allows the company to, to survive in time of hardship. Take, for example, during uh, this time here when uh, companies have to be relying on the government, like the airline industry, that's because of their high fixed cost approach in their business. So they have to uh, rely on, on uh, government to help them for bailout so that they can get themselves back on their feet. and survive during a, uh, the period of difficulty. So from our, for our conservative company, we we'll look at the table here and you can see that at zero units sold, the, the operating loss would only be 12,000. Um, and the break even uh, is 30,000 units, which means that it, it's below that 50,000 units for the more uh, for the less conservative firm. So for the more conservative firm, it's 30,000 units uh, for a break even. And so you can see that here, but you can also see that at 100,000 uh, units, the company is making only $28,000. And if we compare that 
to the highly leveraged firm, you will see that at 100,000 units, company is making us. So what's operating leverage? So operating leverage measures the amount of fixed costs used by a firm. So it measures the amount of fixed operating costs used by a firm and the degree of operating leverage is equal to the percentage change in operating income divided by the percentage change in unit volume. Now, a change in sales bring a larger change in earnings for interest and taxes or operating income if the degree of operating leverage is greater than one. So if the degree of operation uh, degree of operating leverage is greater than one, then a change in sale will bring about a larger increase in earnings before interest and taxes. If the uh, so degree of operating leverage measures the sensitivity of the firm operating income to a change in sales. So a leverage firm has high fixed costs, high break even point, and high degree of operating leverage. A non leverage firm has low fixed costs, low break even point, and low degree of operating leverage. So leverage is a double edged sword because it magnifies losses as well as profits. So here are our two firms, the highly leveraged firm and the more conservative firm. And so you can see in comparison here that income uh, and, uh, for at zero, the losses would be for the highly leveraged firm 60,000, while the profit would be, while the loss for the more conservative firm would be $12,000. And you can see at 20,000 units, it's 36,000 in losses for the highly leveraged firm and 4,000 for the more conservative firm. Now at 60,000 units, the uh, well, company will be indifferent here between either strategy. So if the company was gonna operate at around 60,000 units in sales and production, then either strategy could work, right? Because it's with um, this would be, the indifferent point where it's indifferent between whether it should leverage or not. At 100,000 units, then you can clearly see that the more leveraged firm is making far more profit than the less, uh, than the more conservative firm. So how about financial leverage it measures the amount of debt used by a firm so the degree of financial leverage is equal to the percentage change in earnings per share over the percentage change in earnings before interest and taxes so a change in earnings before interest and taxes are operating income Brings a larger change in earnings if the degree of financial leverage is greater than one. So the degree of financial leverage measures the sensitivity of a firm's earnings per share to a change in operating income. So the formula for the degree of financial leverage is the degree of financial leverage is equal to operating profit over earnings before interest and taxes. So operating income divides by earnings before interest before taxes. Sorry. So operating income divides by earnings before. So how about the impact of finance the financing plan? and earnings per share the, let's look at uh, in case one where the earnings before interest and taxes is zero 
you can see that in this case with interest expense of 12,000 and 4,000 that the earnings per share would be 0 0.75 and 0 0.8 0 0.08 uh, for the conservative firm and of course we can see the number of shares um, in the two different plans. How about at $12,000 uh, uh, operating income? 12000 operating income, you can see that the earnings per share of the left, the more conservative firm would be 0 0.17, so 17 cents and that compared with zero cents in the case of the leverage firm. At operating income of 15,000, and this is at the indifferent point, you will see that earnings per share in both cases is at 25 cents. And so now at earnings at Operating income of thirty six thousand. It's now clear that the more leveraged firm has a higher earning per share, as you can see here, of one dollar fifty compared with sixty seven cent, and even greater uh, earning per share of three dollars compared to one dollar and seventeen cents in the case of of EBIT of thousand dollars. So how do we uh, uh, calculate the indifferent point? So the lever of earnings per share at which alternating alternative financing plan yield the same earning per share, uh, mathematically, it could be found by this formula where we are taking the share of A times interest of B minus the share, okay, so it's the share of B times the interest of A minus the share uh, of A multiplied by the interest of B. That's divided by uh, share B minus share A. So financing plans and earning per share again showed graphically in terms of its indifferent point you can see that at 0.25 cents earning per share that's where both uh, plans cross uh, each other so plan a after this will produce after this point will produce a much higher earnings per share but before this point plan b was the preferred choice because it has a higher earning per share up until we reach that in different point now here's a look at the highly uh, at financial leverage in selected industry in Canada. And you can see that the oil and gas industry, for example, has a low um, long-term a long-term uh, debt to equity ratio as uh, as a percentage of the overall debt compared to the uh, utilities, for example. And so um, the reasons for this really is that the utility companies tend to have uh, a, a more certain cash flow and therefore can allow themselves to, to take on more of those uh, long-term uh, debt. So, um, let's look at operating and financial leverage combined. So operating and financial leverage combined, it means that you're using the entire income statement and it shows the effect of change in sales or volume on the earnings per share. So the degree of operating leverage and the degree of financial leverage are therefore combined. 
So we will look at how does a change in sales affect earnings per share and with in the entire income statement as we are combining both the degree of operating leverage as well as the degree of financial leverage. So here is a, a graphical look at it. So we can see from this portion here up until this point here where we are looking at the operating leverage that is up until we reach earnings, operating income or earnings before interest and taxes. And then from this point of earnings before interest and taxes up until we reach earnings per share, that part of it is the financial leverage. And it's a combined effect of both that we are talking about when we speak of the degree of combined leverage. So combine a total leverage represent the maximum use of leverage because so you're using um, both area, areas here where you can use leverage, both the operating leverage and the financial leverage. And so yeah, the, the, the company is making maximum use of leverage. The degree of combined leverage is equal to percentage change in earnings per share over percentage change in sales or volume. So a change in sale, change in sales will bring a larger change in earnings per share if the degree of combined leverage is greater than one. So if the degree of combined leverage is greater than one, we are expecting that any change in sale will bring about a higher uh, change in in earnings per share so combined leverage would be degree of combined leverage would equal to the degree of operating leverage multiplied by the degree of financial leverage and so here are our formulas break even equal to fixed cost over contribution and Degree of operating leverage equal to contribution over earnings per share. Degree of financial leverage is equal to earning uh, to earnings before interest and taxes over earnings before taxes. So degree of operating leverage is equal to contribution over earnings before interest and taxes. Degree of financial leverage is equal to earnings before interest and taxes over earnings before taxes and and the degree of combined leverage equal to degree of operating leverage multiplied by degree of financial leverage So in summary, leverage refers to the use of fixed costs to magnify profit or loss of a firm. It is a double-edged sword because it can magnify losses as well as it magnify profit. The management must be sure of the level of risk assumed. So operating leverage refers to the use of fixed operating costs such as lease or amortization expense and the degree of operating leverage measures the sensitivity measures the percentage change in operating income as a result of percentage change in sales financial leverage refers to the fixed financial charges such as interest costs and debt the degree of financial leverage measures the percentage change in earnings per share as a result of a percentage change in operating income. The higher the level of fixed costs, both in operating and financing costs, the greater the effect on net income of an increase in sales revenue. This is the degree of combined leverage. 
Okay, so thank you very much and see you in the next tutorial.